Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Reeves from Jonathan Reeves Architecture. I'm a Vectorworks specialist and professional Vectorworks trainer. And today I'd like to show you how you can use Vectorworks with an amazing new piece of software that's come out recently called Twin Motion. There's a new version just come out on the Mac in the last week. Um, it's been out on Windows for a while, but it really is quite amazing and it really will enhance your Vectorworks models and turn them into um, very beautiful rendered views and animations very rapidly. So first of all, I'm just going to take you through um, a little project that I'm working on at the moment for a new dwelling. Um, it's going to be an eco house, possibly having to look at the paragraph 55 route to get planning. It's going to be a difficult planning application. But here's some initial ideas, and you can see in my Vectorworks file, I'll just show you a few of the sheets that I've presented to the client. If I scroll through some of the sheet layers here, you'll get a bit of an idea about the project. Essentially, it's a two buildings, one sort of living space, and one space for more office and ancillary use. Um, we've got a full range of elevations, plans, and sections, all being generated from this single model. So in a way, you know, we're kind of using a a BIM approach, um, even though it's very early stages on the project. You can see we've also done a few different options with a single story and also the second story option too. Okay, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea on what the project involves in Vectorworks. Okay, so let's have a look at the design layer. So I'm going to go to my ground floor layer here and you can see the model really is very easy to spin around. Vectorworks is these days is very rapid for prototyping, especially if you've got a good graphics card. Um, I'm actually on a PC here with a very nice graphics card. It's um, a 1080. Now, one of the really nice things that we can do just briefly in Vectorworks before we go off to Twin Motion is just talk about how we can improve the quality of our renders. So one little thing that I really like to use and take any time at all really is turning ambient occlusion on. Now, ambient occlusion is where the light doesn't really bounce around so much when it's in the corners of the model. And you can see it gives it a nice sort of slightly dirty look, um, but much more realistic. And what you find is, you know, you hardly need much more than that. That and maybe a heliodon just to cast some nice shadows. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just save this model. And let's go ahead with the export to Twin Motion. Um, so I've been experimenting with this and there's a couple of different file formats you can use. Um, you could use the FBX file format and also I've found recently that the OBJ works quite well. So let's go ahead, um, let's try the OBJ first of all. So the first step is to basically import a model. So we click on the import button, we go and select our OBJ file. You can see it can import OBJ, FBX, SketchUp and also Cinema 4D files come in really well. Lots of other file formats too. Let's click open. Now one thing I know that we'll need to do is just scale the units because Twin Motion works in meters generally and I was using millimeters. Now the real benefit of Twin Motion or the other rendering software is it kind of heralds a new age of real-time rendering. The quality is really interesting, really good. Um, but it's the speed at which you can put scenes together and basically change materials, change the lighting, add trees, props, people, cars, that kind of thing, and also add some atmosphere. Um, it's something that I've been really keen to do in many of my renders over the years, and it was always hard to do in animated films. It was quite easy to do in Photoshop, you know, you could add people and trees, but in terms of animation, that's it. Right, okay, the model is imported. So what I do is I'll open up this side here, you can see that here is the model A OBJ. And one thing I know just need to do here is just zoom to that selection just so we can see the model. Fantastic. So here we've got the model here. You can see I can navigate around quite nicely with the keyboard using the gaming keys. W, S, uh, up and down is Q and E is down. And if I hold shift down on the keyboard and the middle button on the mouse, just like in SketchUp, we can pan the view. So a lot of the commands in terms of navigation will be familiar to you. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and essentially just tweak the lighting. Let's have a go. Here we go. In real time, we can just tweak the lighting. It's very nice, very instantaneous. We can change the speed. So these are the different speeds. So okay, so let's carry on with a bit more on the design. Now, first step is to add some materials. So basically, we pop open this side library here. If we want to, we can click on the lock icon, which I think I'll do. And I'll click on materials and let's start with glass. 
So I'm going to go for some two-sided glass. Basically, I just drag and drop onto the model, as is familiar in many of the other rendering softwares, like Atlantis, Cinema 4D, and even Vectorworks these days as well. Let's drag that onto there. And I think we'll scroll down and get some blue glass onto this aspect. Now, all of these things can be tweaked. The opacity, that's a little bit intense. And the shininess, maybe a little bit intense and so on. Brilliant. Okay, let's carry on with maybe a little bit of work on the ground. So we'll go back in terms of our materials and we'll move on to, let's have a look, ground. Now, I really like <clears throat> the grasses that come with um, Twin Motion. You can see it's very easy to drag and drop a few different types of grass onto the model, depending on the mood you're after. Let's go for this one, quite nice and green. And we'll drag that onto the model. Excellent. So you can see already it's starting to look really good. Um, we can click on the texture if we want to over here. And essentially we can change the scale. Not that we want to do that particularly. Let's tweak it down a bit. If you, if you prefer, you can just type in to get a bit more accurate here. And we can also change the reflectivity. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference just yet. And we can also do things like rotate it and essentially map it how we would like it to be. Okay, let's zoom out a bit now. Um, I'm pretty happy with most of the materials here. I wanted to try some polished concrete on the walls. You can see it really is extremely rapid. I'm going to undo that quite keen on the texture we had already. But the beauty is a lot of the textures have come through directly from the Vectorworks model already. Okay, let's tweak the lighting one more time. Let's adapt the time of day and see how those textures look during the course of the day. Nice. And what I'm really excited about is adding some motion. So we're going to go back to our materials libraries and essentially we're going to add some life to the model. And this is where I think Twin Motion really works extremely well. So you can see here, I simply drag on a tree, bring it into my model, and then we can easily scale that up or down. Let's just select it here. And to copy it, we just hold Shift down and we can essentially drag off some additional instances. So it's really nice and easy. And we can drag those into the model at various positions. And I'm thinking, let's have a cherry tree here. Let's scale that down. Wonderful. You can see real time, there's some motion already. And essentially, we can easily drag in lots of different options and try rapidly to enhance the landscape of our model. Either place individual elements of grass on the model. It's quite nice. Or when we're really ready, we could go a bit further and we could click onto the icon here which represents a leaf and click on vegetation and then that allows you to essentially drag and drop some grass so now you've got the brush icon activated you can essentially paint areas of grass can you see so as I paint with a different brush size I can really you know get a really nice feel for my landscape here okay that's looking pretty good I'm going to add some uh, buttercups so let's drag some of those in maybe mix in with a few poppies and if I select both of those at the same time, I can basically brush with the two things that I have selected. Let's carry on with the landscaping here. Let's add some nice white daisies. It's really nice and easy. If we prefer, we can drag them down into the brush area and we can essentially just paint quite a large area with those. Let's drag that again and again. We go, got it selected, got the brush here. If you do too much, you can just get the rubber and just rub it out again. That's pretty simple. We'll have some ferns here. You can see I'm just bringing them in quite quickly, quite rapidly to enhance the model. Um, again, let's scroll through the library here. Let's get some grass perhaps. <laughs> it's starting to look quite jungle-like, but I'm just really trying to give you a bit of an impression about how rapidly you can enhance the landscape of your model. So it's looking cool. We've got a bit of motion going in here. Let's have some nice fine grass, I think. Now all of these items are added in the organization tree. So every single one can be selected and then scaled and adjusted. You can even, if you turn off auto, you can even adjust the season. So different aspects there. And you can turn the wind on or off. So if you don't want the animation, you can just turn that off. 
So that's looking really nice, that view. At any time, I can basically click on the icon here, the eye icon, and I can just say, like, I render a snapshot. And I think that's cool. That's just hopefully taken a snapshot to the desktop for me. Okay, great. Let's move on. Let's add some animation. So we'll go through to characters. And we've got some humans here. So these are really nice. They're quite decent quality, and they're very fast to render. So essentially, we can click to add a person. If we want to rotate them, just click on them and rotate them around. don't think we want to be scaling people. Let's add somebody for him to chat to. And let's scroll down a bit further. Let's add a few more people over here to the area, the patio area. We can also add maybe a little group. So let's pretend there was a little party going on. Um, we can click and add a few groups of people. Now you'll notice that every time you click and add a group, it's really nice. It actually adds different groups for you so that you don't end up with the same kind of people. Animals, um, I really like this. We can have some butterflies flying in the scene. We can have a couple of dogs and cats. And it's the speed at which you can do this is particularly fun. I think it just gives the model a bit of life. And finally, what, if you've got a pond, we can have some fish, but let's go for some birds in the sky. Okay, brilliant. So we've already set up a number of views quite rapidly. Now what we can do is move on to the animation stage. So essentially, we'll go to this icon here. Um, we'll start off with a couple of images. So let's basically create an image. Um, so you can see easily, I can click back between those images now. Now what's really nice is um, each image, you can adjust the time locally. So if you just decide you fancy a slightly different look, that's fine. And we just click update. This image, you'll see we've got a completely different time of day. Go for a nice sunny part of the day. And I think with this one, we'll go a little bit more into the evening. Now, if we want to export those images as high quality renders, uh, we simply go onto the export tab and we click image and we basically add to the list image one, image two, image three. We can click on the settings, a few different settings in here. I'm not gonna go into that right now, so we'll go back to image, and basically I'll click export, let it go. Now, you'll see how fast the images are rendering. Um, these are gonna be pretty high quality, and I'll show you these in a moment. That's all of them done, I believe. You'll see even higher quality than the actual real-time preview window. So that is particularly nice, and this could serve as a really good base with a little bit of Photoshop work. I think we could really add um, some, you know, some really nice, maybe a bit more sky and some features here. So I think I'm pretty happy with the background. Let's keep it as it is for now. And let's move along to exporting some animations. So if I click video, so what I'm gonna do is scroll around a little bit and now we can click create. So basically I'm creating my first clip. So I click create to create a frame. Then I scroll through to a different view, change the camera view, click, click the plus sign to add another frame. So here you can see if I click play, already I've enabled the animation. Essentially it just um, tweens or interpolates between the three camera views that you've set up. Now, if you want to change the length of the clip, all we need to do is add a bit more time. Let's say um, 20 seconds. Cool, so let's rewind to the start, play it through. That's kind of looking nice and smooth now. See, we've got a little bit of atmosphere going on. We've got the butterflies, the birds, and we've got some people moving around. So that's looking good. Excellent, I'm, I'm liking the look of this. So I think what we'll do is we'll stop that for a minute. We'll click back onto the start time. And maybe what we'll do, just to show you how this works, we'll start the day a little bit earlier and we'll just click update and we'll end the day a little bit later. Not too late. And we'll click update. So what we should now see is when we rewind the model, I'll just check the start time here. Yeah, that's looking good. As we animate the model, you'll see the shadows of the Heliodon um, are actually moving as well to give a bit of an eye impression of time passing. And that's a really neat feature that I think Twin Motion can, uh, can offer. We'll click on the export option. We'll go to video and we'll load up that clip. And 
just check out the settings. So we've got lots of different settings, MPEG or PNG, let's go for MPEG. Um, I think we'll go for decent resolution. It's gonna be 4K res. Yeah, happy with that. And essentially I will click export. Now, <clears throat> this is where I think Twinmotion really excels. If you've ever tried to do this in other programs, you will have noticed that basically animation can take anything from days to, I don't know, weeks, depending on how long it is. So with me, for me, Twinmotion, um, while the quality is very good, it's really about the speed of rendering and the speed of being able to communicate ideas with some interesting atmosphere that you wouldn't be able to create with other softwares. So, you know, I think as time goes on, um, you can basically customize the software a bit more to your own needs, uh, make textures, make materials, and also bring in your own libraries. Obviously, I'm not showing you how to do that today, but I just really wanted to introduce you to this amazing new software. Let's double click it, and here we go. It's fully rendered out, playing rather nicely. You can see the quality of it is a lot better than the, the draft preview. And, you know, all of that in a very, very short space of time in terms of putting it together and also rendering it out. Now, I hope that's given you a bit of an idea of what Twinmotion can do. Um, I know the model itself and what I've shown is, uh, is a little bit basic for today, but it's more just a demonstration of what the software is capable of. Obviously, with a bit more time, you'll be able to produce some really nice looking images and models. And I'll be back later to show you a few other aspects of the software that I haven't come on to yet, the VR and also the BIM Motion. But that, I think that's enough for this video. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Jonathan Reeves from Jonathan Reeves Architecture. Please leave a like and subscribe if you would like to and follow my link to the website for a bit more information. And if you'd like to buy the software or get some training, please let me know. Thank you.